right, hello OAS family. It is time for another book review. And today we are reviewing a book in a book of four, uh, a series of four books. So the series is called Flowers of the Four Seasons, a manual in Chinese brush painting. And uh, the series is by Su Sing Chow. And this is volume one, Spring. So before we get into the details of the book, the general statistics are it is 10 and three quarter inches tall by eight and a quarter inches wide. And it has approximately, the 64 pages and it has instructions in both Chinese and English. So what I like about these books is that it keeps the subject matter fairly simple and fairly iconic. So the amount of subjects that are depicted, especially when it comes to flowers, is actually quite few. But then it allows it to expand a little bit uh, more detail uh, with each subject. So you get a little bit more detailed instruction um, than you see in your typical flower books. So we're going to get right into it here. And we see that the uh, flowers that are covered. The first one, of course, is uh, one of the most iconic and popular floral subjects in Chinese brush painting, and that is the peony. So he gives a nice introduction here about uh, the history of peony in Chinese culture, and uh, there's a nice bit of detail about um, uh, its use, tracing back uh, to the dynastic periods. And uh, this is a nice bit of context for the subject. Um, so you have a finished composition here with the branches and the leaves done in ink and the petals done in color. And then here is the first uh, subject that he's going to speak about as far as instruction. So he has a completed composition here and he goes into a little bit of detail here on the left hand side uh, about this particular one. Um, what I like about uh, Johnson Chow's books or Su Sing Chow's books is that his English was actually pretty good. And so, and he really had a passion for sharing uh, Chinese painting. Well, he, he had a, a passion for sharing the joy of Chinese culture through painting. Uh, with uh, the, the people he came in contact with. So um, you have more, more intentional instruction that's here. It's not just um, somebody like an assistant offering, you know, some translation or some text that's just for filler. He's really trying to communicate um, the details of, of uh, the subject here. So here is another composition that he discusses uh, and has some bulleted points here about uh, this particular composition. And then here's the third finished composition. And again, uh, some details about the, the piece. Now he gets into uh, some isolated strokes. So here is where you can kind of see the details of the elements. So he has different strokes for petals here. So you can see uh, them done in isolation, split apart. Uh, and then he has some ideas for how the, the flower is rendered at each stage of like from the closed bud to partially opening bud. And then, um, and then he gets into the details of the, the, the middle of the flower with uh, all those um, pistols and stamens and whatnot. And then uh, a nice bit of description about the elements here on the left-hand side. Now we get into a section on leaves and branches. Uh, and then a nice bit of expo exposition here on the right-hand side. Uh, now he's talking about, in this section, about like growth pattern for the leaves and um, things like he things that he calls like scaly buds and branch stems. So these are, um, you know, little idiosyncrasies of the flower that can help you depict all these, you know, like, um, you know, when, when, the, when the tree itself is cut, then you have, you know, these new sprouts coming out. And this is kind of like uh, what, he's, what he's talking about 
um, and he's depicting them here in this finished position, all these little happy dots or little notches or little places where new, new growth is coming through, shoots and stems and whatnot. Okay, so now uh, that is a section on peony. Now we're switching to magnolia. So I really like the choices of subjects in here. Uh, they, they really are some of the most iconic ones. Um, so uh, magnolia, uh, peony, of course, we lead off with, and then this one is uh, this section is on magnolia. So we have a finished composition here where we have the white flower magnolia done, depicted with these outlines, and a nice composition here of. Uh, uh, sort of descending branch and and then here is is a bit of uh, historical and cultural context for the subject uh, on the left hand side and then we get into the first finished composition with some accompanying details here and then composition number two and then we get into the elements. So this is about how he's depicting the petals with the outlines. So you can see here very clearly how these line strokes are done. Um, and uh, he offers them in separation so you can get a kind of an idea of where one begins and where one ends. And then he does try to give you some uh, exposition about how the strokes are done. Um, how the brush should be prepared and whatnot. So then he has a section about like connecting the flower buds and the and the pods. So he has sort of this depiction of these like again these closed buds and then different stages of opening, uh, uh, as well as some adjoining branches and some small leaves and then here is a section that's just on stems and branches with some nice bullet points here to discuss the exposition of them now we get on we go on to azalea and then here a section on uh, the cultural background of the azalea here, historical and cultural background. Uh, and then we have this composition one here, and then, well, this sort of finished composition here, and then this is illustration one that he actually offers some details about. And then composition two. And then choosing to show sort of a, uh, more pink red variety on, on these first two and then a more orange red variety here in the second one and then a section here on the petals so you can see all these different strokes these are this is great for stroke practice you can use a combination brush um, you know and you can see um, you know some of these wider ones are actually done with two strokes so you can see whenever there's an adjoining little lip like that, you can see that it's done with two strokes. You can see this here, there's a little bit of separation, so you can see that. And then there's all these smaller single strokes. And then a little section that shows flower cluster, clusters in isolation. So these sort of, you know, uh, when it comes to sort of young flowers all growing out of this single branch here, and then you can see how he does the flowers in various stages of opening. This is all very useful to look at. And then he offers some details here on the right hand side. And then goes over leaves and branches for Azalea. There's some nice description here, some details. And then we move on to wisteria. So, so far we've covered peony, magnolia, azalea, and wisteria. That is really a nice choice of spring flowers, uh, you know, if you have a limited amount of space. Um, 
this is really nice. So, so we have um, a little bit more general information about the subject and some historical cultural context here for the wisteria following the format of all the other flowers. Then we have uh, the first composition illustration one and the, the, some details about it. So this is nice. He talks about like all of these elements, like in what order that he does them. So he, he sort of does that so you can um, see the way there, there are some overlapping elements and then the, the order of painting is sort of important to like get the, get these overlapping elements to work um, in the best way possible. So here's uh, composition number two. And then coming up with uh, some details here, or uh, the petals in isolation, basically, um, you know, coming from these young buds, and then you can see at these various stages where the petals just start to emerge, and then you can see them here, more, uh, more emerged petals, but not unfolded yet, and then you can see them develop, and you can see he's doing all these uh, petals in isolation, too. And then the leaves for the wisteria. And then the wisteria is, is uh, the first flower that he's covered that has these vines. So there's a lot of um, brushes that we have that are a little bit longer. And those sort of longer, narrower brushes are really good for these turning line strokes, like the ones that you're using for vines. So you can see here that this... Um, you know, with this texture, I would probably use like a mountain horse brush to get that texture. Uh, and then something, you know, like this. Of course, you could you could do these with a, any kind of detail brush, like a happy dot. But maybe if you had like dancing grass, if you wanted to try something a little bit longer for these to get to get a nice feel in these turning line strokes, you could try you could try it that. And then iris. So. Uh, we're going to close with the iris. So again, nice little piece of historical or background here on the, the subject. And then we have this first composition here with some accompanying explanation. Changing colors to a truer blue. First few couple were purple ish in color uh, and some illustrative text and then he talks about the flower uh, and shows some strokes in separation again showing buds at various stages of unfolding in this very sort of iconic stem that have these different um, Calyx is off shooting and then uh, the flowers emerging. And then here's a couple different forms that the flowers can take. And uh, she's also showing some color variations here. And then finishing off with the iris leaves. And then we have a close uh, of like a little amalgam of some of the flowers that are covered. We have a wisteria with uh, an azalea and a magnolia all on the same page. So this is a nice uh, little finishing composition piece. And then we have a preface and a foreword uh, done in English here. So um, this is nice um, information. Um, personally written so you can you can uh, uh, get a, a sense for what what he was like and his his desire to share the Chinese culture through this uh, through through the art so that is it once again this is uh, flowers of the four seasons a manual on Chinese brush painting volume one spring by Su Sing Chow. If you want uh, more information about this, you can uh, 
look up more details on our website at orientalartsupply.com. And we thank you for watching. And uh, if you want more content like this, you can uh, give us a like and a subscribe and make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever we release a new video. And as always, we wish you happy painting. Thank you.